years ago, been passionate about applying technology into the workplace for training and collaboration. Uh, I've done that in the corporate world until five years ago before leaving and founding Ambient, uh, which is based in London and, and Coventry, where we help a variety of organizations apply primarily consumer technologies that haven't made it into the workplace yet. And my specialty is on mobile learning and virtual worlds. On the virtual world side, a lot is more germane to this project, is what I'll be focusing on here. We are the European distributor of a platform called Forterra Olive, and that's what you're seeing here, as it's a bit like Second Life, but also quite different. And it's a private, secure, behind the firewall, uh, with open API um, system that uh, is, is quite different because the avatars can be photorealistic and they breathe and they blink and they nod their heads just like we're doing now and all that's automated but not only that but because it has open APIs it can be they can be controlled by artificial intelligence software we can combine it with other kinds of technology so the avatars act even more natural um, and uh, a lot of our business is involved with helping organizations use and apply these tools so but some of the examples I have are, are, are about that um, so it's used today, it's a U.S. platform, it's used today in, um, in military, intelligence, homeland security, medical type applications, as well as simple corporate meetings and events and that kind of thing. Uh, this picture here is of uh, FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Association, our agency, that uh, are now starting to trial using the platform for emergency response instead of getting physical, physically getting to a command center. They can do that virtually and bring in live video feeds and live m mapping data and, and meet with um, and talk with voice over IP and all that. And those are some of the examples. We also can mix um, uh, children and adults and also have the avatars look a lot older than generally speaking ones in secondlineplay.com do, which is also relative to this project. So just a couple pictures to highlight this. And so this is just a better picture of what I was just explaining, but I and others believe that virtual worlds, I, this used to say virtual worlds are becoming our workplace. Virtual worlds are our workplace. And they are currently used for meetings like this. This is a picture of a combat, combat information center in the US Navy. They modeled a destroyer, and interestingly, they bought the model of the destroyer off the internet for a few hundred bucks. But then they had to model the interior, which nobody had that. <laughs> but what they're doing is, is training on, on command and control procedures for a missile launch. And so they're able to do that. But all of this imagery in here is all just mocked up as just photographs of, of that. Instead of being live data, what they see as the next phase is having those be live data feeds, either live real world data or simulated data, so they can do more dynamic training that way. All the way to, so that's quite, a, this is quite advanced applications, but what we're doing day to day are simple meetings like this, and for your project team where you can come in, all of us, and you guys have probably already done this, meet as avatars, we all can hear each other, everything's recorded to the server as well, and we can bring in different kinds of media, which you can't see here, but PowerPoint and videos and all that stuff. But also now we have the ability to dial out of the virtual world dial people's mobile phones, which is pretty eerie when an avatar calls you. <laughs> and it's fun to demonstrate, so next time I visit we'll get on the internet and right. actually mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. And the whole point here is that people are not always, you know, in an immersive 3D environment, you need to get expertise that's on the phone. And so this is another way of doing that. So the, I'm also doing a, a PhD at uh, Smart Lab, University of London, and the focus of my PhD is on collaborative 3D visualization in the mobile metaverse. So it's analyzing data sets as avatars, multiple users looking at something together, and it's, will this help us make better decisions faster? And extending that into mobile devices, and because not, again, not all of us are in a, a 3D world, what is it that we need in our hands to be able to visualize? That's, those are my, that's what I'm passionate about, where I see in, an industry uh, developing, uh, but where we're at now simply is um, the ability to use middleware to bring in data sets, to buy entire 3D cities as part of Lustre that we can import into the virtual world and combine that with avatars, and so what that gives you is a whole new world of context. You, at lunchtime you brought up that you, uh, that you visited Calais with your, um, mm. with your mom, 
complete. There's no reason why you and your mom couldn't walk through virtual. And then she would be able to point things out. And for mobile, mobility impaired people, oh. it's, it's huge. Oh. It's, it's like oh. the next best thing to be in there. And we can also do very high res interiors uh, as well. Um, we're using laser scanning and other techniques. So my business is focused on, we sell the underlying software to do this and we'll configure it as clients need. So some universities have a whole modeling and data analysis group and they can do it all themselves. They get the SDK and the API. Others want us to help. They might need us to do the modeling um, or they just want to use the existing uh, basic rooms and features that are already there. So we're almost through this. What I'll, I'll do is highlight where I see um, industry going and why your research is really interesting to us. So this panel I was on a couple of days ago was about artificial intelligence, at least like um, robot avatars, how it fit in. This is a scene of actual training that was done outside in California, outside Stanford Medical, uh, Stanford Hospital, where they'd shut down part of the university, I mean the area around the university and the hospital, to run a drill with a real fire and real police. You can imagine how disruptive that is and how expensive which is why they started piloting doing it in this virtual world. So you can have the actual police and fire and so forth exercise what they would do. In this case, it's a bomb goes off in a bank and it's a dirty bomb and it turns out people need to be decontaminated. In order to make this more realistic, not only can you do the things you do in the real world, which is talk on the radio and push people around in a stretcher and use vehicles and it takes the same amount of time to drive that vehicle as it does in the real world, but you need crowds there, right? And you got to do crowd management. Well, today, to get these 60 people here, we need 60 laptops, 60 people, or at least you know, highly dexterous people that can run two at a time. <laughs> uh, or, of course, we can use artificial intelligence software to do that. And that's what Forterra in the U.S. are doing with the different funded research and what we're extending with a highways agency to do use control vehicles. I think I have a picture of that. So there's a the technology strategy board project I said that we want a grant to model this stretch of highway, the M42, for the guys that sit in a command room and decide when to open that lane and when to change the speed so they can practice making decisions and see the output of their decisions. Well, in order to model this queue of cars, that's, that's easy. And even to get the cars when you open this lane to just half find their way and go that way. It's fairly easy, but to model, why we think we want is we're modeling the cognitive behaviors of these drivers. So what do happy drivers do? What do angry drivers do? And here you see um, Placid Ron and uh, Angry Ron, uh, me sitting in a vehicle. So we, you know, what would the effect of different drivers be on, in, on that model? And so that's what we're right in the middle of modeling now. <clears throat> but it's not so related. It's related in two ways to your project. One. As so we talk about new interfaces like Wii remotes and other thing kinds of ways that older people or anybody can interact with the virtual world, this is an example of how because we have an open API that you can work with this engine to use tools like that. So it's interoperable, whereas other other platforms really aren't uh, as much. Um, that's one example. The other is you think of who are the commanders that are in the in the uh, today in that driver center in the uh, in that command center. Um, there are a wide range of ranges, including the starting ages that you mentioned. And so what we can learn about how do people, how can people, how do people work in these environments and how wide, how are they accepted or not accepted and what can we do, more importantly, to make it easier for them uh, to begin with. But as you, the people start to retire, we just saw a film full of role play with actors. Um, we need role players um, to to play some of the different people on the on the road, otherwise you got to use your own people. So what we've already found is we have ex-military and ex-police and ex-fire who are retired, who are our role players, who now are getting paid to come back in the virtual world and share their expertise, but also make these the training more realistic. And so that's another that's output. Uh, and we can go on and on about some of the business development ideas I have. Well, I hope we monetize that. <laughs> uh, so this is the work I mentioned with Coventry University where we had a small bit of funding to do a, a com, com, uh, uh, emergency response management by senior commanders. So what the previous example with all the crowds was, it was low, I won't say low level, but what they call bronze level here. So the guys on the ground, the boots on the ground. Here's the, the heads of police, the heads of fire responding in this case to a flood emergency. What do they do? How do they? How do they interact with each other? And, and it's all about decision making. 